Ask them if they can change. This week on Direct Connected News, see one family security system and find out what can keep you safe this winter. See how businesses are managing this busy holiday season. The Marion Civic Theater is continuing their tradition with fruitcakes. All this and more this week on Direct Connected News. Good evening and welcome to Grand Connected News. I'm Lauren Carpenter. And I'm David Horner. It's that time of year known for giving, but that doesn't mean everyone has good intentions. Marion Police Department says the monthly average for burglaries is 12.7 per month. However, the police report that during the month of November, there were 17 instances of burglaries. During the first 10 days of December, there have been nine reported burglaries. Crime may not be on the rise, but that isn't stopping some homeowners from taking action. We'll send it to Brooke Holsizer, who talked with some people that decided to go the extra step. Well, Lauren and David, I talked to a Marion police officer and a local Marion resident and learned a few ways to keep your home safe through the holidays. As the holiday season approaches, that, that festivities like become a, a priority, you know, like, and so does safety. For Bobby Browder, keeping his family safe is a necessity, and one of the most secure ways to do that is with the home security system to protect them from invasion. Yeah, I think with the holidays, it's, uh, there's a lot of people in need, and it leads people to have desperate measures and, and, and take advantage of other people uh, just because the need is there. With his state-of-the-art security system, Browder can leave his home feeling safer and more comfortable, knowing that his family is safe and sound. Police officer David Day knows that being safe is about more than just having a high-tech security system. It's about being smart. You should lock up cars, your house, um, don't leave things laying around, um, because those types of things become targets of opportunity. 
It may sound too easy, but simply locking up can keep you and your family safe and sound this Christmas season. Officer Day also said that the biggest issue usually lies in unlocked vehicles. If you leave your car unlocked while you're doing your shopping, it's way too easy for someone to break in and steal from you. So make sure everything is locked up tight this holiday season. Back to you and David. Thanks, Brooke. Well, it sounds like we got some pretty good tips on how to stay safe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I always make sure to lock my car just anywhere I go, even if I think it can be safe. Just You just never know yeah, what we're going to do. Definitely. Well, there may be a lack of snowball fights this holiday season, but Christmas tree sales have so far been as strong as ever. Thomas Enterprises sells live trees in front of the Five Points Mall every year. Owner Dallas Thomas says about one-third of people are still buying real trees and sees sales just as good as they've been in past years. Thomas has been in the Christmas tree business for many years and says it has always been good to him. Obviously, I wouldn't be in it for 67 years if I wasn't having a good time doing it. Thomas said his lots will see one last big push this coming weekend when people are picking up their trees right before the Christmas holiday. Thomas wishes everybody a Merry Christmas and hopes they got a good tree to remember the day. And trees aren't the only thing people are shopping for around the holidays. Brianna Gar talks with business owners to see what is driving the holiday sales locally. It's the most wonderful time of the year, and for Loudon Jewelers, it also happens to be the busiest. Owner Andrew Loudon is excited to serve Marion for the 25th year in a row. This season has been terrific. Uh, we started a little bit early. We had uh, an open house on our small business Saturday. Uh, and things have really been busy since. Even though Loudon's is expected to get much more business this holiday season, it's not quite returned to its peak numbers. 08, 09, and 10 were really tough years. Um, since 11, it started to creep back up. But Loudon Jewelers is just one of many small businesses in Marion. Art and Motion Pets is also preparing for holiday sales. Uh, in the winter, y'all, we see a little pickup in dog and cat food. But the most important thing about holiday shopping is putting the money back into the community. Uh, we like to focus on keeping it local, shopping local, keeping it small, and keeping the money in the community. With the support of the community, small businesses like Loudon's and Art in Motion can continue to help improve Marion's economy. In Marion, Brianna Gar, GrantConnected.net. Have you done your Christmas shopping yet, David? Not quite all of it. I might have to pick up a few last minute gifts. Yeah, me too. Well, when we come back, we'll head to the court with the Oak Hill Lady Eagles. See how Coach Todd Law has kept the program strong for the last decade. It's all just ahead. This week on Crossroads, we're on location at Marion's Walkway of Lights. We'll also see how the Salvation Army goes far past ringing bells. Take a stroll through the walkway through the eyes of a four-year-old. And CSA takes center stage for Scrooge. I'm Randall King. And I'm Shaylee Clark. It's all new this week on Crossroads. On the next episode of Wildcat Week, I sit down with the NCCAA National Champion Volleyball Coach Candace Motes and talk about their run towards the title. I'm also joined by men's head soccer coach Luke Sanford to wrap up his first season as the IW coach. Finally, men's basketball head coach Greg Tonegal stops in to talk about their win against the Huntington University Foresters. I'm Roger Alcock. Join us on Wildcat Week. Christmas from all of us at WIWU TV. Well, the Indiana Wesleyan Chorale is hard at work rehearsing for Handel's Messiah. 
After some stretching and massaging, the vocalists are ready to practice for the Messiah. Dr. Todd Guy works tirelessly with the students to make sure each note is perfect. Third year student Anna Winning is excited for the performance because of the different type of music that they get to sing and the spiritual aspect of this piece. This is something where we're speaking like us to God and so uh, we got, get to sing a lot of different um, things that have been around for a very long time in musical history. The chorale is performing Handel's Messiah in the Philippi Performing Arts Center this Saturday at 7 p.m. And now we'll go over to the sports zone with Zach. Thanks, David. The Oak Hill girls basketball team has a legacy when they put on their jersey. This team is one of the most successful ones in Grant County. Oak Hill girls basketball season is well underway. And as you walk towards the gym, you can't miss the history and success of this program. Girls varsity basketball head coach Todd Law just recently got his 200th win with the program. And he says that the consistency of the coaching is one of the keys. Uh, you know, it's uh, support from the school, from the administration, all the way through, um, you know, to be able to put together uh, what we have now is 11 winning seasons in a row. This success led the team to two state finals, but ended up short both times against Heritage Christian. Courtney Moses is the only player from Oak Hill to achieve the honor of Indiana All-Stars back in 2010. She also played basketball at Purdue University. Coach Todd Law enjoyed having the opportunity to coach a player like Courtney Moses. Uh, she's a tremendous uh, player, and uh, but, but even more important than that, a tremendous person. Um, she's got great character and did a great job of leading our team for four years. The trophy shined right in the hallways of the gym, and the players on this year's team will continue to add to the history of wearing the Golden Eagles jersey. The Lay Eagles played McConaughey High School and defeated them by a final score of 52-22. to the Marion Boys Varsity Basketball Team moves to number three in the AP Class 3A poll. Oak Hill receives votes in Class 2A. Also at Marion, there's a new face to the football program. It was announced at the Marion Community School Board meeting on Wednesday, December 9th, that Marion High School hired new football coach, great Craig Chambers. Craig Chambers was the head coach at Howe High School in Indianapolis with a record of 23 and 13 in three seasons. In the 2015 season, they won the first sectional championship in school history as they finished 10 and 4. After adding a regional championship, the Hornets lost semi-state to the eventual state champions, Monrovia. Chambers will become the 22nd coach at Marion's storied football history, which includes a, a final number one ranking, two IHSAA state runner-ups, 10 North Central Conference titles, and a number of professional players. He will also be Marion High School's first African-American football coach. Now moving from high school sports to college, Indiana Wesleyan volleyball team competed in the finals of the NCCAA National Tournament against Oklahoma Baptist. The Lady Wildcats faced OBU in pool play and lost in a tight match, losing 3-2. This game was a different story as the Lady Wildcats came away with another NCCAA title, beating Oklahoma Baptist in straight sets of 25-19, 25-17, and 25-23. Junior Remy Buckner, sophomore Morgan Miller, and junior Kylie Portera all led the Wildcats with 10 kills. So great ending for a fantastic volleyball season for the Lady Wildcats. Yeah, it really yeah. sounds like they had a very good season. Oh, absolutely. And also, I'm really excited to see what Craig Chambers will do for the Marion football team. Yep. Yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah. Well, when we come back, we'll take a look at the past with the Marion Civic Theater. See how the history plays into their current production, Fruitcake. God brought me here to make me who I am today, a servant to him. A servant to my team, fearless to be third. Our success came from within. Commitment to hard work, training, and relentless practice. But our success on the court was only the beginning. Because we all play for something greater than ourselves. If we're from Him, through him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. My name is DJ Bettinger. And thanks to Indiana Wesleyan, I'm fearless to start this next chapter in life.
On the next episode of Wildcat Week, the men's soccer team competes for the NAIA title as they face Southeastern University and Rio Grande. A sit down with John Foss and junior Jacob Ryan King as they wrap up their successful cross country season. I'm also joined by women's basketball head coach Steve Brooks and men's basketball coach Greg Tonegal to give updates on their season. I'm Roger Alcock. Join us on Wildcat Week. Grant County students get a Christmas lesson from the Marion Community School of the Arts. The kids that are in the show are so invested in what they're doing, and that is an inspiration to the kids in the audience. This week on Crossroads. Merry Christmas from all of us at WIWU-TV. The Marion Civic Theater first opened its doors in 1951. Now, 64 years later, the theater is preparing for the holiday season and continuing their tradition of bringing Christmas spirit to the community. Inside a quiet downtown building, actors are once again making a little magic for Marion this holiday. Magic, the Marion Civic Theater Company, has put on stage for more than half a century. Diana Gardner grew up in Marion and also, it seems, on this stage. Her office is filled with pictures from the memories she has with the theater. She starred in her first show when she was 19. That was one of the most fabulous summers of my life. She says even after all of these years, she is still friends with her fellow actors. It's really extraordinary that we still stayed friends in spite of no social media. So you had to long distance call or write letters. And so when I think about it, that's even more impressive. Even now, with the theater's latest show, Fruitcakes, actor Mark Esch says he feels the same about his co-actors. The fellowship with everybody, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Gardner says she hopes the Marion community can appreciate this hidden gem. The group of people who are trying to do um, volunteer work that really enriches lives with the people who are in it and the people who are going to come, the audiences. With 64 years of performances, the Marion Civic Theater hopes to continue its passion for years to come. Yeah, I saw the rehearsals earlier this week and it looks like it's a pretty great show. I might have to try and go see it. Yeah, good idea. For all of us here at Grand Connected News, thank you for watching. As we say goodbye, we're going to watch another light display, not in Marion, but in Gas City.